Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a personalized typography poster for a family or a friend as a gift that you can frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you all the techniques that you need in order to make up the different sentences and lines so that they fit and they're accurate. And then I'll speed up the video as I fill in the rest of the form. And then I'll show you how to export it or save it as a template. So the first thing we need to do is to decide on our margins and to see our grid lines. So if you go up to the layout tab, you will come across this icon here that says margins. If you click on the drop down, you can see there's a number of different selections that you can choose from here. I would generally go for normal, but if there is something specific you want to, you can customize the margins by using this icon here. And then you can just fill in the amount of margin that you want around your page and then just click OK. So I'm currently on normal at the moment. And the next thing I want to do is to view my grid lines. So I'm going to go up to view and then I'm going to go and check grid lines. Now, as you notice here, the grid lines fit perfectly between our margins, although the end line doesn't quite fit here. Now, I do have a video if you want it to fit perfectly, but I think for this particular tutorial, I don't really need to see that end line there. So the other thing you need to decide is the type of font that you want to use. I'm going to keep it consistent and keep it to one particular font, but you also then need to decide on the color that you want. You may want to change the color of your page, and you have a particular color of paper, it's completely up to you. So if you want to change the color of your paper, then just go up to the design tab, go along to page color, click on the drop down, select from a color here, or click more colors, and then you've got your color wheel. I'm going to stick to white for this tutorial. And again, if you want to change your text color, go to the home tab, and obviously you've got text colors here, and you can select from a number of options or once again go down to more colors and select your color wheel. I'm going to stick to black which is very boring I know but it will give you all the tools that you'll need for this particular tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is to insert a text box so I'm going to go to insert text box draw text box now at this stage, I wouldn't worry too much about how big or how small your text box is. Now I'm gonna show you a number of faults and different things that happen when you start to use text in the way that I'm going to show you. So let's first put in our text. So now I'm going to go up to the Home tab and I'm going to use the up or down font arrow sizes to change my font size. Now in order to stretch this text across the page, it's going to have to be quite big. So there's two different techniques I'm going to show you. So the first technique is that all of these words do not have to be the same size. Second of all, you can use bold. And third of all, if you highlight all of your text, right click, go down to font, and this dialog box will appear. Go to advanced, go to spacing, click on the drop down, and click expand. Now what this will do is we'll change the spacing between each character of your words and your text. And you can choose however big that gap is by inserting a value here or just by using the up or down arrows. So I'm going to choose a value of six and you can see in the preview how that has stretched out your text and click OK. Now as you can see, part of my text has disappeared so I can go back up to reduce text size. But there's quite a big jump between 36 and 28. So let's say, for example, I put in 34, press enter, and it's beginning to stretch across the page. But ideally, what I want is for this T to line up with this grid line here and this Y to line up with the edge here. Now that's very tricky to do if you're dealing with lots of text. So I'm going to show you a technique that will allow you to do this without all the tiers. So we've got our text box up at the moment. The first thing I need to do is get rid of this white background. You can see that this text box has got a white background and a black border. So just click on it, go to Shape Format, go to Shape Fill and click No Fill, and click the Borders, No Outline. Okay, 
So now we just have our text. Now if I try and move this text to the edge here, it can get a little bit clunky. The way I've found to have more control is to hit the command or control and control key on your keyboard and use your arrow keys and that will gently nudge your text box left or right or up or down. So to save me having to go backwards and forwards to try to find out what font size I need and how I can stretch across, across the page, what I can do is break this whole thing down into either three separate words or just put the two separate words at the beginning and then change this one into a separate text box. So let's just copy and paste this text box, just move that down, double click, I'm just going to highlight these two words, get rid of them, I'm going to reduce the size of my text box, I'm going to double click on this text box, I'm going to get rid of this word, I'm going to reduce the size of this text box, then I'm going to move this up to here. Now the important thing to remember with this is that you don't have to have exactly the same gaps between all the different words if you don't want to, because this is about really changing the words, the sizing, etc., to suit your needs. It's just a bit of art and creativity, really. So, for example, I'm going to change this word to bold, go up to the Home tab, click Bold, so that's just disappeared, so stretch out my text box, and then I could increase the spacing between the two with one space, there we go, and then this text here you can see doesn't quite match the edge, match up to the edge, so command or control and the control key move over to the right, just about line up with the edge here. Now you can see there are slightly different gaps, let's just go to view and click off the grid lines. Now you can either be happy that if you're not, go back to the grid lines, then you can extend this word again by using the font, right click, go down to font, and instead of having six points, let's have ten, press enter. Okay, we can move that over. If that's too big, we can just reduce the font size, go to the home tab, and let's go to 32, press enter, Okay, and then if we just move this text box again, make sure it's on the line here where you can see that I've placed this text on the line. And then at the end there, let's just move that Y over, down onto the line. And I think that's about right. Now, the key here is once you're happy with this, is to make this whole sentence into a group. I've got two different text boxes here and often in Word you'll find that you move things around and then it'll nudge something else and then you start to get cross. So what you need to do is to group these two together. So highlight one of the text boxes, hit the command or control key, go up to shape format, go along to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now you can see that you can move the whole of this around as one, which is perfect. This also means that when you put in your other text, then you can move it up and down and around and you haven't got to move two or three different words from a line and then you've got one wrong and moving it back and it just solves that problem. Okay, so one thing I've just forgotten to show you is now we've got our text box without a background, without a border, with the right font in it, then actually we just needed to copy and paste it. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'm going to ungroup it as well. So we've got two text boxes here. We don't have to use this particular font. We can reduce it and change it. So what we're going to do now is choose a slightly different text. So let's choose a longer sentence. So if you press Command or Control A, it will highlight all of your text. You can just quickly go up to the Home tab and just reduce the size. And again, double click. So as you can see, I cannot get all of this onto this line. So I'm going to have to do some playing around again. So I think I'm going to reduce the spacing between the characters. So I'm going to double click, 
Command and Control A, right click, go down to font, and I think I'll reduce it to six, press enter. So I want the names of the children to be that big. I'm gonna pull it down here a minute so that we can just separate it from this. So I'm going to need to reduce the size and the spacing of the characters of this text. So again, double click, Command and Control A, go up to the Home tab, reduce the size, right click, font, and I'm going to reduce it to four, see how we go with that. Okay, so we still haven't got enough space, so I'm going to double click, Command and Control A, right click, font, and go to two points, see if that works. Okay, so that's a bit better. And now what I need to do is line these two up and make them into a group. So I'm going to click on this text box. I'm going to hit Command or Control key plus the Control key on my keyboard and then just move that text. And again, the same with this side. I'm going to use my arrow keys. Now it's really important that you move this final character to the edge of the grid line. So if you're still not happy with the way this is working, I'm going to extend this text a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to make it bigger. Double click, Command Control A. Let's just make the text a bit bigger. Maybe go to 15. Okay, let's go to 14.5. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to go back to my arrow keys again to get that back on the line. And then I'm just going to view this without the grid lines. Go to view, take the grid lines away. Am I happy with the way that's lying? Yes, I am. Put the grid lines back on. And again, I'm going to go back, hold my command or control key down whilst I select these two text boxes. Go to shape format, go to group and select group. Now I'm going to continue on here to input all the different text. And then I'm going to come back at the end and I'm going to show you how to move them all around, how to export it, so I'll speed up the video while I continue on with the text.
Okay, so once you're happy, you can see how much time it can take to make sure that everything's lined up and that you're happy with the overall view of it. But once you're happy, you can now go ahead and go to File, Save as Template. Then you can see this uh, menu here. You must save it under this Templates here, otherwise it won't appear in your software. When you open up your software, it won't be under your Templates. So you can save it as a template and then just click save. So now if I just reduce this down, go to new from template, there's the typography template, make sure you're in personal. Click on this one, click create. And there you can see this has become a template because it's called document four. So let's say, for example, I did this and then I went to save. Then you can see when I click save, it will ask me to save it as a completely new document. I can't just save it as the template again. So it means you can just use this over and over again if you wanted to do so. So I hope that's helped you today and helped you to be a little bit more creative. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.